Okay, uh, are we live, <coughs> Rakesh? Yes. Okay, cool. And uh, you can see my slides, I guess. Okay, cool. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the another lecture of PNS Modern SSDs. Uh, today, we are going to continue our discussion about address mapping and garbage collection. <clears throat> As a quick recap, uh, we covered SSC organization in previous meetings about SSC controller, the DRAM that we use to store metadata and also for write buffer. <clears throat> uh, NAND flash chips, the organization of NAND flash chips that we basically, uh, we put them across uh, channels. And in each channel, we have several packages or chips. In each chip, we have several dies. And in each die, we have planes and blocks and page and so on, so forth. So we also discuss uh, some unique characteristics of NAND flash, like uh, the phenomena that we need to erase before write, the asymmetry in operation units. Basically, we do read and program in pages, but we do erase in block. And uh, the endurance of NAND flash chips are is limited. They, they cannot tolerate uh, program and erase cycles uh, uh, from certain number more than that and basically the retention loss. We also cover some basic NAND flash operations. Uh, in the previous meeting, uh, not research meeting, I mean the, the background meeting, we also covered some advanced commands for NAND flash chips. Basically, yeah, we, 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 we discussed that uh, the performance of the read and write, if we don't do any <clears throat> optimization, is not quite good. But when we check the numbers from the data sheet, actually they are much better uh, from what we are we were calculating. So <clears throat> the one of the important uh, aspects of this comments subpage sensing that we can do subpage sensing like uh, when when a page is sixteen kilobyte, for example, we can do uh, subpage sensing of four kilobyte, which uh, significantly reduce the sensing time. And also a uh, modern NAND flash chip, they can do random data, data out. Basically after they sense the page and put it in the uh, page buffer, uh, we can basically read amount of data that we are needed, we, we are looking for. So this can also contribute to reduce the TDMA. And the operation of cache read command that we can uh, overlap the TDMA and TECC uh, with the sensing of the uh, consecutive read uh, command. Multi-plane operations that we can do parallel read or write uh, in, in planes. Uh, whenever the, the position of the page in, in those planes are equal to each other. So, and program and array suspension that basically we were discussing that because reads are on critical paths. Whenever we do, we are doing a program, for example, and we receive another read, it is also a common uh, case that's uh, common practice that we suspend the program, do the read, and then continue the program and erase uh, operations. And we, we also discussed that to do that, we need uh, uh, larger or more page buffers in NAND flash chips. Any question about uh, these topics? Okay. So today uh, we are going to discuss, continue actually our discussion about address translation and garbage collection. So as a quick uh, overview, we need uh, we SSD, they have a framework that we call it uh, uh, FTL, flash translation layer. So it has many important responsibilities. Uh, one is address translation and garbage collection, which we are going to cover today. We're leveling data refresh and audio scheduling. We will also cover uh, other uh, responsibility of FDL later in this course. So I'm uh, moving fast on these uh, slides because we already covered them in the previous uh, lecture, but uh, it's important to recap them again I and mean, recall them again. So, so in, in, in simple SSC architecture here, we are, we are assuming so at the host layer, we have a storage, the storage view as at the operating system is a flat block device. 
that we have uh, several logical block address and they are consecutive. But in the SSD, we have a physical block address and physical page address. And you can see that, uh, for example, in this example, we have 16 logical block address, but in the SSD, we have 20 physical page address. And that's because of over provisioning that's basically usually physical capacity in SSD is larger than logical capacity, which can significantly contribute to performance and lifetime of SSDs. So we see that, for example, when we receive a, a write operation on logical uh, block address zero, so the request to the SSD is something like that. So the whole send request SSD by saying that, oh, I want to write uh, a page in the data on logical block address uh, zero. The size is one, meaning that we only want to write only one page. The direction is right uh, and the data. So, and basically <clears throat> the SSD needs to write that data in, the, in one uh, free page. So here we assume that logical block size and physical page size are equal. Basically, logical block size is usually four kilobytes, but in, in SSDs, in modern SSDs, uh, page size, physical page size is usually 16 kilobytes. We will cover a uh, fine grain mapping uh, in basically next week. But in this lecture, let's assume for simplicity that uh, these logical block and physical page size are equal. So, <clears throat> After that, uh, consider that we receive another request that we want to write in starting offset in logical block address four. And the size is 12. Basically, we want to write 12 pages. So yeah, as, as we uh, covered uh, previously, SSD is basically write these uh, 12 pages in uh, three pages. Those pages that they are already erased. But we also discussed that uh, basically we do this in, yeah, based because of the active uh, block phenomena that we need to better to keep only one block being written because of that. Since if you have an erased block and you don't write it uh, for a long time, then uh, basically the, the reliability of that block becomes uh, less. And if you have a erased block and if you start writing in it, it's better to finish that block, basically keep writing on that block to make sure that the reliability of that block is high. And actually it's common practice that uh, sometime in SSDs, if we don't receive writes in a, in, a, in, a, in a certain amount of time, they just write some dummy data in that block to make sure that the reliability of our data is not uh, is, is good enough. So, and actually it is also important to uh, consider that we have program sequence constraint. So usually it's better to write in a block in a, in a sequence, in a, uh, in, in an order. So this is because of the some uh, cell to cell interference, which is important again to consider to improve the reliability of SSDs. So, yeah. So then uh, consider that we receive a read that uh, we want to read data from logical block address four. And uh, this uh, the size is one. So basically we want to read only one page. So basically SSC needs to query uh, where is that data has been stored. So in order to do that, we need to maintain the address mapping information and SSDs has a mapping table that is stored logical uh, page address uh, the mapping of logical page address or logical block address to physical page address. So if we uh, query that table, you can see that uh, logical page address four is mapped to physical page address one. And then basically uh, the FTS sends uh, the, the read command to the corresponding page or flash. Here we consider we have only one NAT flash sheet uh, and, uh, and basically provided the data for the host. Another operation is update. Basically, so at the at the host system, it is common that you want that you are updating your uh, data that you have been written before. So 
uh, as we as we covered previously, basically we cannot do out of we cannot do uh, in place update. So whenever we have an update, we need to do out of place update because of the phenomenon that we need to erase before write. So here, if we receive an update uh, to logical block address zero, basically SSD needs to find another uh, free page to write uh, this new data. So here, uh, it, it, uh, SSD writes to page, page, for example, 13, and needs to basically invalidate uh, the previous version of this uh, logical block address. So consider that we keep receiving such updates uh, to the logical block address zero. I mean, it's not usual. It's not usually uh, usually the case, but here, to as an example. So we keep receiving, and basically, SSC needs to keep uh, moving, uh, writing the data in a new page, and keep invalidate the previous versions. So at some point, you can see that we we are running out of free pages. So basically, SSC is not going to use all of the uh, pages. I mean, all the uh, physical pages it has, and then try to somehow free some pages. It is quite inefficient. So, and sometimes maybe it is not uh, practical. So usually, as, as, as SSC, they have a threshold that whenever uh, we have the number of free pages is less than a number. They uh, SSC needs to invoke uh, garbage collection to basically to reclaim free pages. So, any question here? We want to discuss garbage collection now. Okay, cool. So, the the goal of garbage collection is to reclaim free pages by raising invalid pages. So. As you know, the erase unit is block. And if a victim block that you want to erase it has valid pages, like for example, uh, yeah, here for example, block two, uh, it currently it has currently it has four valid pages, right? Or for example, block zero, it has only three valid pages and one invalid page. So basically, whenever that victim block that you want to erase it. It has valid pages. SSC needs to copy all the valid pages to other uh, free pages. So here you can see that why it is important to uh, invoke garbage collection uh, soon enough. Yeah. And do not wait that, OK, we basically we run out all the free pages and then start uh, garbage collection. We need to start it sooner, basically. So. It has actually quite a high performance overhead, you can see, because we need to uh, read and program all the valid pages. There are some ways to reduce the performance overhead that we are uh, we will uh, quickly discuss in this lecture. But but yeah, basically, garbage collection is really a uh, performance bottleneck in, in modern systems. So and it actually has lifetime overhead also. So basically, you, you need to do additional writes. So there is a uh, concept in uh, in SSC that we say people say write amplification, which means that basically uh, the number of writes that you issue to the SSC consider that you you uh, you yeah you issue n uh, writes, but in the background in SSC basically uh, the number of writes is much larger than n. That exactly is because of this uh, garbage collection. So. Uh, so there are some writes that happen in the background because of garbage collection that we need to uh, read uh, uh, basically valid pages, write them again to some free pages and erase the block. So there, there are some writes that happen more than the writes that basically actually host issue. So uh, SSC is uh, basically managing technique. They are trying to reduce write ampli amplification as much as possible. But this is something that we cannot avoid uh, completely. So there are should be a lot of policy you can imagine to basically consider that to yeah to basically decide which block should be uh, selected as a victim, but as a very very simple policy we can assume greedy victim selection policy that basically we uh, raise the block with the largest number of invalid pages. So. 
Any idea why this uh, policy is good? Any thoughts? So when, uh, when we have less number of invalid pages, the good thing is that basically, uh, sorry, when we have less number of valid pages, so in, in the in the victim block, you are reducing the overhead of uh, reading and uh, writing uh, valid pages. So one of the important uh, overhead of, uh, of this garbage collection is that you need to copy all the valid pages that you have in your uh, victim block. So if you use such greedy technique that you select uh, a block that has, yeah, uh, that maxim has uh, many or the largest number of invalid pages, you make sure that you reducing that overhead, the copy data overhead. But there are also other uh, important uh, phenomena to be considered here uh, for victim selection policy in garbage collection, like for example, uh, the throughput of the garbage collection, if we can do basically multiplane read or not, or something like that, you know, it's not only about uh, the number of copy that you want to do. It's also important the, the bandwidth of that copy. So we will also try to uh, uh, quickly discuss them, uh, these other trade-offs later, but, I guess you can understand the, the overall idea of the garbage collection and how the victim selection policy can contribute. Okay. So in order to implement such, an, such a greedy uh, victim policy selection, SSDs, they need to keep status stable in FDL. So in that table, basically we store, we, uh, yeah, basically we keep track of uh, invalid and valid pages for each uh, physical block address. So here uh, in this example, simple example SSD, we have five uh, physical block. And for each of them, we keep the, and in each of them we have four pages, right? So you have such an uh, bit vector, you can consider as a bit vector that we keep the status. So for example, for uh, physical block address zero, we have four pages and one of them is invalid. You can see why it's invalid because we, we update this block. And then uh, in this page, sorry. And we have three valid pages. For block one, we have all pages are valid. For block two, all pages are valid. For block three, we have only one valid and uh, three other pages are invalid. And for block four, basically, uh, we have one valid and three pages are free. So yeah, as a, we cannot keep it as a bit vector, sorry, because we, we, we have uh, three states, states here, free, valid, or invalid. But yeah, so basically it's important to keep track of uh, the, 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 these three states for each uh, block. So here, uh, when you query this uh, status table, you can see that uh, physical block address zero has the largest number of invalid pages. So we, we are going to uh, select this block as the victim. So there is only one valid uh, page here. So we need to read this uh, physical page address and write it to one free uh, page. So, a free page here, we need to select uh, page 17. So we write, uh, basically, yeah, we, we program physical page address 17 uh, uh, by the data M. And we need to update the status. Now the block three, all pages are invalid. And uh, in block four, now we have two valid pages and two free pages. Another thing we need to update is the mapping table. So basically, previously, uh, logical page address.
yeah, previously, uh, this logical page address 15 was uh, mapped to physical page address 12. But now we, we actually move it to 17. So we need to update that to 17. So there is a question here. So how FDL knows uh, physical page address 12 is mapped to logical page address 15? Because we usually keep the, the mapping table in the reverse way, right? So whenever we have a logical page address, we query the mapping and we know the, the position for the physical page address. But how we can know the opposite way? Any thought? So the answer is uh, simple. Basically, we keep uh, physical to logical mapping as well in a physical page out of bound area. So in each uh, physical page we have, as we discussed previously, we have some places, some, uh, some space to store some metadata. So this is also one metadata that you can store there, that this uh, physical page is mapped to uh, which logical page address. Okay. So after uh, finishing copying all valid pages from block three to block four, then uh, we, we can erase the block. So we send command to erase the block and we update the status of the, uh, in a status table that all pages in block three now is free. So here also it's important to note that we, we do block erasure and a status update um, just before programming a new page to the block. So basically it's a phenomenon that we call it lazy erase. Again, this is because of uh, due to the open block problem, right? So uh, whenever we want to do some write in the SSD, then we basically actually do the actual erasing. It's important to note that because when, when we erase the block, we want to write to that block as soon as possible, as we discussed for the reliability reason. So in SSC, it's a common practice that they do lazy erase. Okay. Any question about the, the overall operation of garbage collection? Good. So let's see uh, about some performance issues. So garbage collection significantly affects SSC performance. Why? Because it, it has high latency. So large, usually in SSC block size is quite large. And uh, for example, block that contains uh, 576 pages is from one real SSC. And assume that we have 5% five pers five of the pages in the victim block are valid. So, we, we discussed that uh, the, the read time is, we can assume 100 microseconds. The program latency is 700 microseconds. And that uh, the erase latency is uh, for the block is five milliseconds. So if you want to estimate the overall latency that uh, the garbage collection uh, takes here is basically you need to copy the 5% uh, of pages in that block, which is uh, almost 28 pages. So you need to basically do uh, read and program for that 28 pages. So yeah, so the latency would be something like 28 times addition of a, a read plus program, and then you need to erase uh, the block. So the overall latency would be something like 27,000 microseconds. So you can see that the latency orders of magnitude larger uh, than uh, read and program. And basically copy operation is the major or contributor rather than the uh, erasing uh, latency. So he, here actually from this formula, you can, under, you can uh, sense why I was saying that basically the number of uh, valid, uh, the number of invalid pages 
in a block is not only uh, the important factor to be considered. So here we assume that all of these read and program happen in serial, but sometimes SSC can basically do intelligent garbage collection so that can do uh, many of these operations in parallel uh, of uh, writing, reading and writing data. So basically not completing parallel, but yeah, uh, can overlap some of these latencies. So these are also other parameters that uh, SSC can consider to improve the performance of garbage collection. But yeah, overall garbage collection is really costly operation. So usually a modern SSC does not do that, uh, does not do garbage collection in an atomic manner, meaning that when SSC is doing garbage collection, nothing else can happen. All the uh, requests should wait uh, for that. But if you consider that as an SSC, basically the FDA, perform GC in an atomic manner, then it delays user requests for a significantly long time, which is can significantly increase the tail latency and the performance basically your SSC, you can, if you profile the performance of your SSC, you can see that at some point the performance significantly drops because of the, because invoking garbage collection. And here you can also uh, understand, maybe some of you are aware of this phenomenon, noisy neighbor. So in SSD, uh, we, we have also this uh, uh, issue, noisy neighbor, that basically uh, if your workload is read dominant, so the performance of your workload would be significantly affected when running with the right intensive workload. So and consider that in your system, you are running two workloads together, one of them is read dominant, the other one is write intensive workload. So that write intensive workload basically uh, cause, causes to uh, frequently uh, invoking garbage collection because SSD uh, keeps uh, run out of free pages. And that read dominant workload does not have uh, many writes. So basically that workload needs to always wait because of that garbage collection happening in the, in the background. So you can see that uh, the, the problem of noisy neighbor and many researchers have is doing actually uh, in this direction to improve uh, the, the performance of SSC in, in the sense of reducing the tail latency and improving the quality of service. So there are, but if you actually provide the performance of garbage collection in modern SSCs, you can see that, yeah, still it is a, actually an expensive operation, which can cause uh, some performance overhead, but the performance overhead is not that high. Why is that? Because in modern SSC, we have many uh, optimization techniques. So one technique is actually from the host system which is a trim or unmap or discard command that basically the OS needs to send uh, that command to the SSD to inform FTL uh, of deletion or deallocation of a logical block. So whenever in your machine, if you, for example, uh, you remove your delete a file, so mostly uh, that happen only in the, uh, in the mapping table, which is stored in the, in the whole system, in your OS, in the, your file system, not in your uh, storage subsystem. So, because that wasn't actually an issue in in hard disk in HDD, but with SSD, because we have this uh, phenomenon of uh, out of place write, and we need to do garbage collection. It is important that whenever we delete a file, basically OS needs to uh, inform the SSD that this file does not exist. So, whenever SSD wants to uh, do garbage collection, then SSC can see, oh, these are free, these pages that previously they have been basically mapped to some uh, logical block address. I don't need to copy them. Why? Because the, the data is not exist, does not exist in the, the file system anymore. So basically garbage collection can skip copying uh, of them, which is really important too to not copy obsolete data. You can consider that SSC consider them as invalid data, but 
I guess you understand the diff difference here. So invalid meaning that you you have your uh, one data in your page and you copy you basically you update that uh, logical block address. Then basically you need to uh, move uh, write that data in an, another physical page and you invalid the previous copy. But consider that this is the last update of one logical block address and it is valid. But in, in your file system, you remove that data. So someone needs to uh, inform the SSC that, oh, we don't have data. So you can consider it as an invalid data. So this is a trim common, basically. Another <coughs> important uh, mitigation technique is background GC. Basically, whenever your SSC is in idle time and uh, not servicing a lot of requests, so we do this background GC that uh, can, uh, yeah, the goal is that goal is to uh, minimize the interference between uh, the expensive GC operation with application read and write. So then the challenge is how to accurately predict SSD idle time. And, uh, and another important challenge is premature GC, meaning that since uh, your GC is doing in the background, you may copy some pages that could have been actually invalidated by the whole system. So since you are not, uh, you are doing your G GC uh, not at the right moment. So you are copying some data that you consider them as valid page, but they are already actually, if you, if you were doing that GC in the right moment, those pages, they were invalid. Or I mean, the, maybe the, the user would remove that file. So, we don't need to copy them anymore. Another important uh, mitigation technique is progressive GC. Basically, we divide GC process into subtasks, which is actually, I guess, heavily uh, supported in uh, modern SSDs. So in, in the previous example that we were about to copy 28 pages, so what we can do is that we can copy one page and then service user request. So with this, Basically, you're increasing, you can see that you can, you are increasing the, the latency of GC. But since you are in the meantime, you are also servicing user requests, then the, it is really effective at decreasing the tail latency and overall improving the user experience. Yeah. So any question? Does all techniques make sense to you? Okay, great. So there are some uh, required materials that I would suggest that all of you go over them to understand more about this topic. One important uh, paper on address mapping is uh, DFTL, which was in uh, published in ASPLOS 2009. So we didn't cover uh, actually the uh, basically the trade-off between having the FTA, I mean, the, the mapping table, uh, if you keep the mapping table based on your pages, page address or your block address. So in the past, there were, uh, people were discussing the trade-off between having uh, the mapping table at the granity of your the block or at the granity of page or something between. So this paper was something uh, related to that direction that uh, it was, Basically, uh, so the thing is that if we do uh, mapping, uh, keep the mapping information with pages, then your mapping uh, mapping uh, table is quite uh, high and large in capacity. So that was the issue. So this paper was discussing about uh, having a cache, small cache in in a in a DRAM uh, SSD, in DRAM inside the SSD, so that we can uh, we can still uh, keep the uh, mapping table uh, as uh, at, at the page granity while uh, accelerating the access with this cache. But nowadays, actually, mostly people keep the, I mean, in modern SSD, keep the whole mapping table inside the DRAM. And uh, only some specific, uh, really uh, power constraint SSDs, they don't do that. But mostly SSDs, they keep the whole, the whole of the mapping table inside the 
uh, data. So, but uh, yeah, but still, uh, I guess this paper is really nice to look at and understand different uh, trade-off here. This is also another important paper about cache read and read retry. So uh, from uh, Dr. Park in ASCLOS 2021. So yeah, this paper was also a paper from uh, our group, Safari, that we published. So this is also so important to understand how we can use this cache read and read retry, um, basically, basically how we can use cache read to, uh, to improve the performance. And read retry that we also cover at in some lectures that basically whenever uh, you do read operation, you need to check the ECC of the data, ECC of your uh, read data. And it is also usual common case that uh, the ECC fail. And then uh, basically we need to do again the, the read by uh, modifying the reference voltage. So this uh, read retry, this paper was, uh, trying to optimize this read retry operation. And also about program and array suspension, there are some papers here that uh, we will, uh, you can also go over them if you like. Okay, any question? So in the next meeting, uh, next week, we are going to cover about uh, fine grain mapping which is really important. As you know, uh, in, in modern, in, in usual system, in file system, the block, block address, block size is four kilobyte, but in modern SSDs, pages are 16 kilobyte. So we do actually this fine grain mapping, which is uh, quite important to have a good performance, but it is also costly. So it is interesting to see how modern SSDs handle that. So if there is no more question, maybe we can uh, wrap up today's meeting. Okay, thanks everyone. Uh, mom, moment, oh. uh, there is a yes. question in the Zoom chat. Uh, oh, do, okay. any of, do any of these papers cover GC in depth? The ones you, the required material, I think. So for GC, I don't think so. Uh, we will uh, suggest some a uh, good paper for GC also. I guess Rakesh, you can uh, suggest some papers uh, later. We will put them in the, in the in our website. Does it make sense? Okay, good. So, yeah, I'm going to stop live streaming. Everyone's...